Hey everyone, welcome back to another audacious devotional. We are drawing ever closer to the end of our fantastic devotional series based on the book of Jude. What did we tell you? It might be a very small book, but there has been so much content that we've been able to extract from it. Amazing nuggets of wisdom that will hopefully have helped you on your walk. Now, we have been looking at staying in this week. Yes, not going out to the shops, not popping to your friend's house, but staying in. Staying in the Father's love. Because we want to be a people that stay in God's love, no matter what happens. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want to be drawn away. We don't want to be taken out by the devil and his lies, his strategies, his wicked ways. And when we say taken out, yes, he wants to extract us from God's love. But equally, he wants to phew, take us out. He wants us to die. Because that's what he wants. He doesn't like it. He is jealous of everything that we receive from Jesus. So we want to be people that stay in the Father's love. Now, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17b to 19 says, And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people. That's you, the Lord's holy people. We need to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen. A love that surpasses all knowledge. How intriguing is that? When we think of the word love, especially here in England, that's overused so much, perhaps it comes, it becomes a little bit watered down. But this is a love that surpasses knowledge. This is from our Father in Heaven, our Creator, that wants true relationship with us. Now let's have a look. What happens when you stay in God's love? You discover your true identity by knowing that you belong to God. True identity, not what the world says you are, not what your friends say you are, but your true identity. You belong to God. John 15 verse 9 says that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. We belong to him. That is real connection right there. And because of this, we know that we are loved. John 3.16, it says, God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have what? A little bit of life? A slightly extended life? No, eternal life. You confess with your tongue and lips that Jesus Christ is Lord and Saviour. He died and rose again from the dead to bring us to righteousness. You are saved. You have that guarantee of eternal life in heaven with him. You are loved. That is the epitome of being loved. God sent his one and only son to die for each of you watching this right now. And also, don't forget, we find our true identity from knowing that we are chosen. We are chosen ones. We are a royal priesthood. We are set apart a holy nation. In John 15 verse 6, it clearly states that you did not choose me, but I chose you. God chose you. You didn't go looking for him. As we've heard recently, God wasn't lost. We want, we are lost. We are lost sheep that go astray. And God leaves the 99 to go and find the one. He chose you. The God that created the heavens and the earth and all the stars in the sky chose you. So yes, you are chosen by God. Your identity is not based upon your upbringing. It's not based on your circumstances. It's not based on any failures or mistakes. That's not your identity. Your worth is not defined by what you have, what you don't have, by your position or your possessions. Your true identity is found in that holy, wonderful, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, name above names, Jesus Christ. Find your identity in Jesus Christ. 
Ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 and 5 NIV. It says, For God chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. That is so beautiful. We are not holy and blameless in this world, but in his sight we are. Through Jesus Christ we are. We've been adopted to sonship through Jesus Christ. And did you see that? Through God's pleasure and will. It brings him joy. We are connected. Our Lord wants true relationship with us. Also, you are adopted by God. Adoption to sonship. You are adopted by God. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 NIV says, Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God. Co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Amen. Sufferings. Yes, we will have sufferings. But we share in his glory. 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 NIV says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. Amen. What great love the Father has lavished on us, not just drip fed or given little snippets of or little breadcrumbs. He's lavished it on us. He's poured it out in abundance because that's what our God does. He does everything in abundance. He pours it out to the overflow. He is so merciful and graceful. He is gracious. <laughs> he lavishes love upon us. And you will feel that. You'll feel it in your daily lives. You'll feel it in your prayer life. You'll feel it from people around you. Just have an open heart to receive it. Don't push it away. Open your heart. Trust in God. You're a child of God. You are indeed a child of God. Our identity does not come from whether or not the world, whether or not your friends or your family accept you or reject you, whether people speak bad things over you. That's not where your identity comes from. Labels that people put on you, labels that you put on yourself because of what's happened in your life. Take those labels off. Rebuke them in Jesus' name. You are not lazy. You are not always late to the party. Take those labels off. You are not always an angry person. Take those labels off. They are not from God. Whether you feel wanted or whether you feel needed by them, God himself has chosen you, not the others. Don't worry. God has chosen you for just a time as this, as the Bible would say. You have an origin, an, an identity, an origin and an identity in Jesus Christ. You belong to him. Our identity is rooted in the relationship we have with the Father. Our identity is not a result of chance or circumstance. It's part of God's intentional and his sovereign plan. God's sovereign plan, your affirmation, your approval, it comes from God alone. Don't look elsewhere. You may have worldly friends around you who cook for you. They spend time with you. They watch TV with you. They'll take you to nice places and you will feel, oh, it's so wonderful. But for a short time. And that's not where your affirmation and your approval should come from. It comes from God and God alone. Be careful who you surround yourself with. Be careful who you let into your circle. Because it only takes a small bit of bad character from one of those to corrupt your good character. Those with many friends around them will quickly fall in ruin 
But there is one who sticks closer than a brother, and that is Jesus. And that's what we should do for each other. We should live by that. Your affirmation and approval comes from God alone. We don't need to search for it elsewhere. We can so often get our affirmation from our jobs, from titles we're given. We feel so valued, so loved, so appreciated. We have that warm and fuzzy feeling inside. And as good as all these things are, though, because they do feel nice, you have to admit, in the flesh, they feel nice. In the world, it's comfortable and comforting. But they are merely temporary and can come as quickly as they go. Come and go. Come and go. Nothing. Nothing. No thing. Nothing can compare to being chosen by God. The heavens, the earth, the stars in the sky, our creator of all the universe. The one who knows us by name. The one that knew you before you were being knitted in your mother's womb. He wants true relationship with you. Are you open to this? He wants relationship with you. The ball is in your court. Open your heart. Maybe, and this is, this is real, maybe you've been feeling rejected. Maybe you've had issues with your parents, with family, with friends, with partners, with anybody in the world. Maybe you're feeling rejected. Maybe you're feeling overlooked. Maybe you feel that nobody sees you. Maybe you've been waiting for that big moment, or that big job, or that big position, or that big relationship. You've been waiting for that chance. Maybe you're struggling right now. I just want to say to you, today, please know that you are, you are seen, you are known, you are loved. God chose you. You were chosen before you did anything good or bad. You didn't do anything to earn it. You don't do anything to lose it. In spite of all the mistakes you may have made, all the mistakes you may ever make, he chose you. Whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for you. Earthly titles and positions can change. They can be taken away, lost forever. But you have an identity in Jesus Christ that will remain and will remain forever. You're chosen by God. When the world says you're not good enough, when you feel rejected by those around you, when you think that you don't fit the mould, when the enemy tries to tell you who you are, throw back in his face that God's love truly says who you are. Put on the armour of God. Fight with the sword of the Spirit. You're a child of God. You are loved, you are affirmed, and you're chosen by him. And he has given you the weapons, he's given you the tools, He has given you the protection that you need to take a hold of it today. Grasp it today. Stay in God's love. You have to stay in this truth of your true identity. That's your strength. You belong to him. You're loved by God. You're chosen by him. And you are an adopted child of God. Wow. God bless you all. Blessings over all of you that are watching today. Blessings in abundance. We have some exciting stuff coming up very soon. From the 1st of March, in fact. We are starting our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Now, I know some of you have been doing Lent, so you've already been fasting. But we are doing 21 solid days of prayer, powerful prayer and fasting as well. Just head over to audaciouschurch.com forward slash 21 days. That's the number two, the number one days audaciouschurch.com forward slash 21 days and you can sign up right there for a 30 minute prayer slot 30 minutes that's nothing in your day 30 minutes and remember get someone to pray with join our daily 7 a.m online prayer meeting plan your fast don't think that social media is fasting I'm not going to go on Instagram for 21 days. That's not fasting. In fact, use what the enemy wants to use for bad for good. Post on Instagram. Post on Facebook. Post on Twitter and TikTok. Sorry, X and TikTok. Let people know. Share prayers. Share Bible verses. 
Use social media for good. Plan your fast properly. Look into the Bible and you'll find out what fasting is all about. As ever, if you've missed any of our earlier devotional content or any of our sermons from Sundays, head over to youtube.com forward slash audacious church and you'll find all the stuff there. If you want to sign up for daily devotions as well, you can go to audaciouschurch.com forward slash devotionals. Plenty of stuff. But don't forget, 21 days of prayer and fasting starting on the 1st of March. Audaciouschurch.com forward slash 21 days. Bye for now. Enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. God bless. See you soon.